Hey guys, Kev here, and I wanted to just do a video talking about my favorite knives that I got this year. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be a knife from this year. It just has to be that I got it this year so far, and I think that's a good way to do it. Um, and there's going to be stuff that I've already moved on from. It doesn't mean it's not great, just uh, for whatever reason, hasn't uh, suck around is all. So, uh, we can get into it. Uh, my first one would be the CKF Dablis, and I absolutely love this knife. I'm pretty sure it came out, or I'm pretty sure I got it this year. Um, all right, I'm not 100% sure, but I fucking love this, and, uh, so it's going in this video. It's just one of the better, uh, CKF higher end. Well, they're all higher end. It's their best model, in my opinion. Uh, the Evo has really disappointed me lately. The 3.0 wasn't great for me. Uh, it was too big, and mine wasn't all that good. And then um, the 4.0 just was the one I got was really bad. Um, so very disappointed with that. But the Dablis I got was phenomenal. Uh, this is number 418. It's an S90B. It's got the blue crystallized titanium pivots and then the uh, Zercutite clip. NC Blade, CKF were awesome enough to replace my clip that uh, snapped or broke um, without cost or anything. I just noticed the clip is standing off the scale. What the hell? How did that happen? That's wild. Look at that. Doesn't tap though. Does it work? Yeah, it still works. I did not even notice that happen. And I am very frightful to try to bend it again. Um, Cause that's how I broke the other one. I was just trying to adjust it a little bit. Um, maybe it's supposed to stand up like that. I don't know, but it works, and uh, it's not tapping, so I'm going to try not to worry about it, but my brain now is like, Kev, you got to bend it, you got to bend it, you got to bend it, in which case, I will probably break it, and then I'll be back to square one, and I don't want to do that, but I got to do it, but I got to do it, oh, god damn it, Kev, how did, I bet you it was from my pocket, just like thick pocket or something, let's make sure it's seated first. Yes, it is. So you would bend it like right here, but I'm really scared to do it. It's not moving. Man, these clips suck, dude. As much as I love this knife, the clip just sucks. You know what? I think I'm gonna leave it alone. For once in your life, Kev, just leave it alone. Let's see. Oh, that actually did something. Ugh. Usually I would try to mount it backwards. Like this. And then what you do is... You use the clip... Or the frame, the frame is leveraged, but problem being, it can't because the clip doesn't want to stay in. So you have to hold it and try not to snap it. Just going very slow. I'm not really doing anything, honestly, I think. But we're going to see. Oh, yeah, look. See if it's tapping now. Man, I bet you just sitting in my thin pocket, it, oh wait, did I? Yeah. Just sitting in my thin pocket, it, no taps? It must have just stretched out. Yeah, it's tight. And are we tapping? No, it's better than ever now. Hell yeah, dude. So slow and steady wins the race. All right, the CKF Dablis. One of my favorite knives in the collection. I love this thing. Uh, that clip was about to piss me off, but just the the titanium 
skeleton eye, like if you take these scales off, did I do a disassembly? I may have, I think I did, yeah. Um, if you take these scales off, it's literally a knife underneath, fully functional skeletonized knife. And then you throw these beautiful carbon fiber covers on this clip that uh, works and it looks good. So it's fine. As long as you, you got to do what you got to do. And then these crystallized tie inlays. I do wish they would have made the clip out of this so it could all match, but they got lazy and just made this clip for everyone. Um, they do come with a bronze stone washed inlays and clip. So you can swap it out to make it more neutral if that's what you want. The action has broken in so well. I put skips in here. Um, it's not a guillotine, but I, I mean, I have it. There's no play at all. It's a bank ball and it, so for me, it's perfect. Basically dead center, a little over to this side, but again, I think I might've over tightened it. Um, I can flick it lefty. I can flick it righty. I can roll back it and I can front flip it. And if I try really, 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 really hard, I can reach around it. And it's just so comfortable in the hand. Um, this is a knife, I'll admit, I don't think I've ever cut anything with this because I just always grab whatever else is in my pocket because I don't want to fuck it up. Um, I, I probably opened a couple boxes or something, but um, this is not a knife that I think people are running around, uh, you know, abusing. So I, I just really love it. Um, so that's the uh, CKF Davlis. The other one I pulled out of my pocket to test the clip is the Berg Blades Mini Sweeney. Um, I have a ton of videos on this knife, full size and mini. It's uh, whew, it's one of my favorite knives this year. Uh, something more recent has grabbed my attention, but I'd say for me personally and my tastes, this is my favorite knife this year. But in terms of overall what I think uh, everybody's gonna love, there's one coming that I think uh, beats it out just a little bit, but man, this thing is beautiful, isn't it? 20 CV blade, uh, titanium, some kind of black camo or fat carbon. Black pivot sets it off for real. I do wish he did black hardware though. Um, and then a hand satin on here. I had two of these. I had a Mars Valley with belt satin, but um, I, you know, I can barely carry one thing. It's stupid for me to have duplicates of stuff. But I love this thing to death. They may still be available in some configurations over at Bird Blade, so you can check that out. Same with this, I think, at NC Blade. Um, the Pena Garcia Paramore, just so good, man. I love this thing. I'm pretty sure I got it this year, right at the beginning of the year. Um, and I've enjoyed the heck out of it. I haven't carried it as much of late because it's just, you know, uh, new stuff. But uh, my biggest concern with this knife is that it's in M4 and it's a belt satin. So at some point, I feel like I'm going to rust it. But so far, so good. Um, this knife I love because it has amazing action. The front flipper is just so fun to use. And uh, the reach around. This is my favorite reach around knife uh, probably ever. It's just super fun to grab that front flipper and pull it. And it's comfortable in hand, it's small, and it's a sheep's foot. It's like literally perfect. Um, I think I did do a cut test with this one that you can watch. Same with that one. Um, so you can check that out. But I love the Paramore. These are gone, I believe, and they're not coming back. So for whatever reason, uh, Pena decided not to do another run of these. Um, I have, I'm speculating that uh, somebody out there thought it looked a little bit like a Kaiser that we all know, um, but I don't know. I have no idea, um, but I'm guessing that's why, because it's popular. There's no other reason why they wouldn't make it anymore, right? Unless somebody was saying it's uh, too close to something else, but I love the Paramore, so hopefully you have one um, because they're not coming back. Um, the next one, I actually picked this up uh, this year is a Sharp by Design Mini Evo. And this is gonna be sort of a placeholder uh, along with the Mini Tempest, the new one in 80s camo carbon front flipper that I have. 
currently is at Kyle Coonley's getting resharpened because I was messing around in a meeting and I dropped it, hit my keyboard or something, and the very tip just chipped off. It's very strange. Um, but he's fixing that for me, hopefully. But I love the Mini Evo uh, very much as well. I was thinking about selling it. Um, not because it's not fantastic. Um, just because I have so many knives and shit has to go. Um, for me personally, I just don't like keeping a ton of knives. Uh, and I like the Mini Tempest front flipper just a little bit better than I like the flipper on this. Even though this is a banger. Um, I would highly recommend this over the Mini Tempest flipper. Because that one's a little lazy compared to this. This thing bangs. Uh, great size knife. Super comfortable in hand. Uh, it's very, very good. Um, this in 80s. Oh, man. If they did the same kind of treatment to this, that would be uh, sick. But there's your Mini Evo. If you're interested, let me know. Um, I think I paid 300 for this. So I didn't pay a ton. And uh, I'd sell it for something like that. 280 maybe. Um... Let me see, what else came out this year? Oh, uh, Tuya Knives came out with the Wrath V2. Um, I don't know if the Scaphoid for Jim Skelton came out this year, but if I had one here, it would be on the list. It's in the pass around. Um, that knife is phenomenal. I just love that flipper tab and everything. Um, but this has a similar build, carbon fiber, titanium, and this is their Tanto. Just what you get for the price, I think. It's like $250, something like that. You get S9EV, belt satin, hollow ground, double, dual grind, titanium, carbon fiber inlays, milled clip. I mean, kind of hard to beat. Uh, phenomenal in hand. Choke up grip is great. The action is pretty phenomenal. Uh, detents are stout on these. You can roll back them, and then you have the front flipper, of course. So you just have a lot of options with this guy. It's a little tight on the reverse flick because the D10 is good and lock bar pressure is a thing. Uh, so just take that into consideration. There's um, six versions of this. So three colorways and then there's two blade shapes for each. So that's the Tuya Knives Wrath V2. I do have a coupon code, uh, Lefty. I think it's just Lefty at Tuya will get you 5% off. Um, just a code. I don't have a link or anything. Uh, let me see. Oh, this one I got is phenomenal. This is a custom Trevor Berger uh, EXK 30th anniversary slip joint. And uh, I love it. It is got this beautiful crest here, whatever they call them. I mean, you can't even feel it. It's crazy. You can't feel anything. Pins or anything. It's wild. Um, I went with like Black Dunes camo car or fat carbon, L Max blade, hand satin, and the walk and talk is just bonkers. Now, I did have wrap on this, so the blade was bottoming out when I got it. I sent it off to my buddy uh, Corey Dunlap, who's a professional sharpener, and it took two sharpenings and got it out. I've opened and closed it a shit ton since then. And I've tested it. I've had no problem with hundreds of opens and closes. So we're hoping it's good to go. Um, super comfortable in hand. Just a beautiful knife, right? I love this thing. That one little issue aside, I think I can forgive. And uh, it's beautiful. It's 500 bucks custom made. I have no issue with that. And I have this beautiful slip for it that matches from my buddy Troy over at Northwoods Leatherworks Co. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else that pops out. Best knives this year. Not that I have right here. Um, but the last one you guys have seen a lot recently from me. And that's the American Blade Works Model 1 Button Lock. Um, this knife inspired this video. Um, this is probably my favorite knife this year all around. The mini, the mini Sweeney, probably my personal favorite, but this is my recommended favorite, I would say, for the year, if that makes sense. These studs are just, man, they grab you.
They grab you in a good way. They're not like the ones on Sabenzas. They don't hurt, but they grab you. It's so comfortable in the hand. It's a great size for everybody. It's magnet cut at, you know, whatever, 63, 64, I'm sure. Reversible pocket clip and a button lock. So it's basically an ambidextrous knife. It locks up, I think, like a bank vault. I mean, there is nothing. No play anywhere. And listen to this. I mean, and it has a little click, which I'm pretty sure is built in to add extra security on the lockup. It's not hard to disengage. There's, there's no like difficulty pushing it. It's just a added security. I've whacked it and had no issues. Um, I did take it apart and put skiff bearings in here. Uh, you could see that video probably, uh, was one of the ones before this. And it was a pleasure to disassemble, reassemble, no issues. The stock bearings though, I will say are phenomenal. So there's really no reason to change them. Comes with nice Delrin bearings. Um, you, you can tell that these people care because they're not putting those stamped shit, you know, 440c bearings that everybody uses in their knife um they're getting quality bearings and putting them in um and i appreciate that so it doesn't need skiffs i just do that because you know um i love skiffs this knife is a banger and um it's just so easy to recommend it's 329 this was 425 new these are 260 or something, which is great. Made in China. 307, 325, I don't know, 700. 329, fully made in the United States of America. And the quality is just as good as the rest, if not better. So, no brainer. Anyway, there you go, guys. Those are... Uh, most of my favorite knives this year, I, I'm not going to have everything on the table that I can think of. Um, so I apologize if I miss anything. There's plenty of knives I've loved that I just, you know, don't have here anymore or whatever. So let me know which one's your favorite out of the bunch. Um, the standouts for me, I think, are right here. But uh, I love them all, clearly. And uh, I love you guys uh links down below for anything here uh, some of this stuff is not available unfortunately um and these should be continued to be made and dropped so stay tuned for that it's kind of their new model um where some of these are kind of these are gone these are closing out i think blade hq had a sale on these these are probably gone these are gonna be gone once they're gone those are already gone these are custom these are available i think so all right I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day and uh, I'll catch you later. Peace.